Hey everyone, in today's video, I am sharing my favorite math intervention strategy with you. And it's a great one because you can use it in any grade level and you can use it with any skill or standard that you're teaching. I recently finished up an entire math series here on my channel where I took a math skill and I taught some ways to conceptually teach that skill. Here are the four videos, boom, 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 and boom. Each video covers four different skills that we generally teach in a kindergarten, first or second grade classroom. And again, I talk about some conceptual ideas using math talk that you can use with your students. And then I also share some concrete activities that you can use as well. In each of those four videos, the lessons I talk about, the examples I give follow along a specific structure of teaching that is actually called the CRA model or the CRA strategy. And that is the instructional technique we're going to talk about in today's video. So if you're ready to learn more about best math instruction, give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and let's get started. The CRA strategy, which stands for Concrete, Representational, and Abstract Strategy, is an instructional model that is often used with students with disabilities, specifically math-related disabilities. And this is a conceptually based type strategy to really help students understand each concept. If you watched those four videos that I mentioned earlier from my math series, I talk about conceptual learning a lot, so go check those out. But essentially, this strategy really helps students understand these concepts to develop a deeper meaning behind each skill that they're learning. I often mention how many math problems are very abstract to our students, even just to something as simple as three plus four equals question mark. There is realistically so much that students need to understand to recognize what's happening in that problem. They need to know what three and four represent. They need to know what that plus sign actually means that we're joining things together. When they see an equal sign, what does that mean? What does this question mark represent? There's just so much that is abstract to our students that we need to, as teachers, take it a few steps back. And that is what this strategy is perfect for. Now, while research has shown that this strategy is very effective with students with disabilities, it it is also effective for all students to learn. Um, it's just something else that you'll want to do with small group students that maybe aren't making as much progress. Um, you'll definitely want to do it with them, but this type of three-part sequence when you're teaching math skills is beneficial for everyone as well. All right, so let's talk about what CRA actually is. I mentioned before CRA stands for concrete, representational and abstract. And it's actually a three-step process that you're going to walk through with your students as you teach them a new skill. And you don't want to move from one to the next until there's mastery at the first one. So concrete is going to stand for concrete. It's going to stand for manipulatives. When you are teaching students a math skill, you want to start hands on. Using addition as an example, we want to teach our students that when we are adding things together, using manipulatives here, we are actually taking two sets of things and joining them together to get a sum, right? To get the answer. So using three plus four, I want three blocks, four blocks, and I want to actually put them together to count that there is seven. This multi-sensory and tactile learning is very important because it helps students create different sensory paths to remembering how to solve something, right? So instead of just looking at the numbers three and four and knowing they have to compute those numbers together, they are adding in some different sensory paths. They're saying, okay, here's three things. Here's four things. They're physically feeling them. And then they're physically joining them together to remember that adding is to put together to get a larger number. With each of these steps, with students actually touching the materials and putting them together, it's creating more sensory pathways in their brain to remember that procedure. So when we're introducing addition to our students, we are using tons of manipulatives. We're making it as hands-on as possible. We can do this in a few different ways. Like I said, we can grab those cubes, we can put them in a pile together. I have these build it cards that I've had forever, where in my first grade class, this would be a math tub we would use, and students would simply build that first number, then they would add on the other one and count it together. In that type of activity, students are actually stacking the cubes so they can see how they have the two smaller parts, put it together to make one bigger part instead of just putting them together in a group. It doesn't really matter how you do this as long as you are showing students that the two parts go together to get larger and you can show them in many different ways. But again, manipulatives, concrete, concrete, concrete. 
when students have mastered concrete learning and concrete understanding, meaning you can tell them three plus four, you can throw three plus four up on the board and they can go ahead, grab three things, grab four, put them together and accurately get the sum. Then we move to the next step which is representational. Representational here essentially means drawings instead of tactile manipulatives that your students are going to use. So here they will still use a pencil and paper, but when they see three plus four, they're going to draw three things. They can draw squares, circles, tally marks, whatever they want and four things, and then they're gonna count them up together. What students are doing here is they're actually rationalizing what's happening in a problem through this scaffold. So they're reading that problem, three plus four, and they're remembering, wait a second, I know that I took three cubes, I took four cubes, I put them together. So they're remembering those next steps, but they're just drawing representations of it. It's like one step down. They don't need to actually hold them anymore. They can just draw what the problem means and then figure out the solution. Not only does this help students really understand what's happening and kind of make that next step towards fluency, but it also helps you, the teacher, recognize what they conceptually understand about the problem. If your students at this step are able to read a problem like five plus four, quickly draw five things, four things, circle them together or count them all up together to find the sum, then you know they know what that means. They know what five plus four actually means and they know the steps to solve it. And then once your students are showing mastery at the representational level, so they're able to do that over and over without much problem, then we move to abstract. With the abstract level, it's simply going to be numbers and symbols only. So they'll just see three plus four equals blank or three plus four equals question mark. And then they need to go ahead and solve it. And can they solve it without drawing things down? Can they solve it without representing each of those numbers? Now, like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, this three-step process is actually going to be beneficial for all your learners. So whenever you introduce a new math skill that you want students to learn, try to do it in this way. Use the concrete manipulatives first to really show them what this looks like. Go ahead and then have them take it to representational and then practice abstract problem solving. Now there are going to be some students that might need extra help and this is where you take them in small groups and you see where are they in this process. If they are still struggling with that representational part, take it back. They need to master manipulative based first, that concrete part. If they're struggling with the fluency, but they're okay with concrete, then what do we need to practice? representational. They might just need more repetitions. As a teacher, it's going to be vitally important that you show them and model to them how to solve problems in all three steps. So if we are, we'll stick with addition for this video. If I'm introducing how to solve addition problems, I need to model explicitly how to solve them using manipulatives. I'll do this in front of the class. I'll ask for student input before I have them go practice it themselves. And we do this over and over until most of the kids in your class have mastered it. Like I said, not everyone's going to and you're gonna pull them in small group and that is fine. But then we move to the next part. When I'm teaching students how to solve something representationally, I need to model how to do that. I will talk it out. I will do it in front of the class. I will show them how I draw different drawings. And then I will go ahead and solve it. And then when we're teaching our students how to solve something abstractly, we also want to model that. So I will throw up problems on the board and I might explain through math talks how I'm solving something mentally in my head, right? I might explain what strategies I'm using without using manipulatives and without using drawings to solve. So a few things are important with this strategy. Number one is that you follow the three step process. Number two is that you don't really move on to that next step until whole group, most of your kids understand, and in small group, really until they master it. You don't move to the next step until that time is ready. And then number three, you need to make sure that you are explicitly modeling how to solve these problems in each of those steps. C R A. If you want to learn more about the research studies that were done using this model and showing and proving kind of why it's so effective, I will go ahead and list a few different studies and articles that I have read in the past. I'll list them down in the description in case you want to check those out. But this strategy or this like framework really is such a simple one that I believe most 
K through two teachers kind of follow, um, or at least loosely follow, but I thought it was important to share with you all so you can just keep that in mind when you're introducing new skills. I would love to know from you if you've already heard of the CRA strategy or if its general outline is something you already follow or if there's a part in there that sometimes you skip or maybe you reverse, let me know down in the comments. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video and found some of these techniques and ideas helpful, especially as you think about going into teaching this upcoming year. If you did like this video, give it a like, subscribe to my channel, and click that bell. That way you're notified of every new video. See you in the next one. Bye.